If you're watching this video, then you're in one of three categories. Either you want to learn how to make icons like this, or this, or maybe one of these. You want to download some of the ones that I've already created, or you're just here for entertainment. No matter which one you're here for, here is how you start. First, you go to File, New, you type in 512 by 512, go to Advanced Options, Fill with Background Color, and set to Transparency and then hit OK. So this is the starting file that you're going to use for every single one of the icons. Next, you're going to take whatever icon that you're going to be replicating. In this case, I'm going to be using Audacity, and you want to import that in. If it adds a selection like this, that usually means it's being pasted on, and if you just press New Layer down here, it'll paste the layer. Now I'm gonna show you three different ways on how to do this. The first way is the wrong way, then the short way, and the long way. So let's get started with the wrong way. Never do this. What you're gonna do is go to the paint bucket and click. Especially on this icon, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. Just don't, don't do this. Sometimes it will work, but even then, don't do this. It just looks bad. This icon especially makes it look very bad, but even on icons where it looks like it works fine, it looks bad. So instead of doing that the wrong way, here's the short way of doing it. So here's what you're gonna wanna do. First, you're gonna go down here, you're gonna create a new layer. You can name it whatever you want, I'm just gonna keep it the default name. Next, you're going to take white, specifically white, and you're going to paint bucket over that layer. Then you're gonna go to this layer, you're gonna go to the layer blend mode, and you're gonna change that to lighten only. And then if you want to make it another color, you can add a new layer, take whatever color you want, I'll do like, a red paint bucket that layer, change the blend mode to multiply, and then you can get it in any color that you want. Now that's the short way. Now I'm gonna show you the long way, and this way can be useful if the design that you are basing off of does not come out well doing it the short way, or if you have to size up the reference image at all, then this will give you the full high resolution image again. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down here, you're gonna press new layer, you can name it whatever you want, I'm gonna keep it default, then you're going to go up here to the path tool and you're going to zoom into the image and start pathing it out. So this tool, if you just press, then it places straight lines. But if you uh, press and hold, then it'll create a curved line. And so you just want to do this along the whole thing until you get it done. To connect the lines, once you're done, you just hold control and then press the last dot, and it'll connect the last two dots, and then I'm going to continue adding more. I'm going to do this middle part separately, so once you're done pathing, you go to this new layer, you press, make sure this is on white, fill path, solid color, fill, and then to get rid of the path that is currently appearing, you just switch to a different tool. I like going to the move tool because it's just the first one. And then switch back to the path tool and you continue pathing. If you didn't want to get rid of that path, don't worry. It is not completely gone. It is just not appearing on the screen. If you go over here to the path tab, then the path will still be here and you can make it visible again. There are cases where the icon may be not very recognizable when made into a flat icon like the Fall Guys logo where it is just text and in these scenarios I usually find a separate image that can represent the application like this Fall Guys bean and I move it around and scale it until I find a position I like and then I path over it. Now in some cases there are icons that it would be difficult to path over like this one. Okay this was a bad example <laughs> but my point still stands. So you want to move over to this brush and for stuff like this, maybe the stars, the the picture that I originally used for Lunar was a lot rounder than this, but I would match the size of it basically. And then I would, I would click down and draw like that. The stars were also kind of weird, so I would do this to draw over them. And then in situations where it is a round icon, something that would also be difficult to path over because it's hard to make a perfect circle, uh, with the path tool. And this is also an example of when you have to size it up. 
So this is 256 by 256. So if I wanted this to be 512 by 512, I would scale it like this, then move it into the center. And now you can see that it is a lower resolution. So this is another way where the long way is useful. You're going to match the size of the different elements. So this hole here, I'm gonna match the size of the brush to the hole, just about. And then on a new layer, I'm going to click. I'll also show you how to like erase sections like this. And then I'll create a new layer, match the size of this middle circle. Just trial and error until you get the right size. Once you think you've found the right size, you're just going to click. And then to erase, you're going to create a new group. You're going to place the two layers into the group. Make sure the one that you're erasing is below the one that you're using to erase. Then click on the layer you're using to erase. Change the blending mode to erase. And it's that simple. And you would just continue that for the rest of the icon. You can also just outright use the eraser tool. This way is just less permanent. So if you ever wanted to change it or move it around after you're already well past the control Z limit, then you can do so if doing it this way, but not if you just erased it outright. Once you're done creating your icon, you go up to file, export as, go to the location you want to save it, name it anything you want really, but the usual naming con convention I use is the name of the program which in this case is Audacity, followed by a space and the color of the icon, which in this case is white. Then you just hit export. This menu will pop up and you change the compression level to zero and then hit export. And now it is exported as a PNG, but Windows doesn't take PNGs. You have to change it into something called an ICO or ICO file, which is just Windows file type for icons. Now, in order to do this, you go to the website that I linked in the description, icoconvert.com. So this is icoconvert.com. To convert the PNG you just made into an ICO file, click here on choose file, navigate to where you saved the file, press open and then press upload. This box will appear and then you just drag this over the entire thing, scroll down, hit convert ICO or ICO, and then download your icons. It'll name it something weird, so I'll just show in folder, drag this over here and rename it to Audacity white and now you have the ico file but how do we actually change the windows icon into this first of all you want to make sure that this is staying where it is if you move the file or delete the file after it has been set then the icon will no longer appear so first you go down to the application which you want to change the icon of then you right click it right click again then hit properties and then over here you'll see a button that says change icon you click that, click browse, navigate to where you saved the icon, press it, and hit open. I'm not going to do this because I actually don't want to change my icon right now, but that will change the icon and it'll stay like that until you move the file. Now that all that is over with, I actually have a Google Drive that is set up with all the 100 plus icons that I have created so far in a variety of colors. So if anything that you are looking for is already here and you like the way it looks, then you can just download it right away and you don't have to do anything. If I've already made an icon that you want, but it isn't in the right color, then just come over here, download the icon, Go to GIMP, create a new file, 512 by 512, background color, transparency. Navigate to your downloads where you downloaded it, drag it in. On the background layer, move it up above, change it to the color that you want. I'll change it to kind of a dark red. Take the draw tool or the paint bucket tool and fill it in. Then go over to the mode change it to multiply, and there you go. Then you just follow the same steps to export and then change it into an ICO. And that is all for this video. I hope you learned something or enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for watching the video. If you made it this far and you've enjoyed it, maybe consider subscribing. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Peace.